Okay, so as far as the major categories go, we can name all of those. When we start getting into phyla, we'll get that there's a lot, so we'll you know deal with those when we get to them in the semester. So um, the first grouping we have are domains. So there's three domains, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. The archaea are going to be um, a type of bacteria that likes to live in very extreme environments a lot of the time. Um, they're more closely related to eukaryotes than they are to other prokaryotes, but they are technically prokaryotes. Um, then you've got regular bacteria, most abundant organisms on Earth, and they're very distinct from both of the other um, domains. Then you've got eukarya, which are going to be the eukaryotes, and those are going to be different from the prokaryotes because they have organelles, they're bigger, that type of stuff. Okay, within each, uh, within the domains, we have six kingdoms. So we have kingdom animalia, plantae, right? So anim animals, plants, fungus, protists, and then we have our archaea bacteria and our bacteria. So to kind of help you understand what I'm talking about here, I wrote this out, right? So we've got three domains. We have archaea, we have bacteria, and we have eukarya. Then, within the domain archaea, there is the kingdom archaea. Within the domain bacteria, there is the kingdom bacteria. Within the domain eukarya, there are four kingdoms, protista, plantae, animalia, and fungi. So hopefully you can kind of see how that works. Now, within all of these kingdoms, there are like a whole bunch of phyla. And within the phyla, there are a whole bunch of classes. So that's kind of how that works. Okay. So let's talk about the fossil record. So we know that sedimentary rocks are going to be where all these fossils are going to form. And basically you've got river deposits that are going to be um, layering on top of one another and eventually they compress and become rock. That's how we get our fossils trapped in there. So there's a couple of different types of fossils. We have mineralized, organic, and imprint fossils. And so once again, something that um, probably is easier if we show you. So here's a mineralized fossil. So what's happened in a mineralized fossil is the entire contents of this organism have been turned into stone. Um, that's exactly what happens to all of these um, bones that you see at the museum, right? So um, those are completely turned into stone. That's mineralized fossil using the local minerals to replace. Then you have what's called an organic fossil, and that's where the living organism actually was trapped in the process, and um, you know those are the ones that they think they can get DNA from. Um, now, not only trapped in amber, but also trapped in ice is another place you could find organic fossils. Um, uh, that's my favorite sink that someday I will have. Um, also, the people that they found in the peat bogs, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but they found these people that are like thousands of years old and they're perfectly preserved. They still have their hair, um, they still have you know leather in their teeth, and so that's another example of an organic fossil. And then finally, you're going to have imprint fossils, and imprint fossils are just like they sound, like footprints and that type of stuff. And a lot of people think those are the most boring, but if you think about it, you can learn a lot about organisms looking at imprint fossils. For example, did they travel in groups? Did they take care of their young? If you have big ones with little ones, you know, what size um, clutches did they have? Like, did they have a lot of babies or just one at a time? So you could probably learn a lot of behavioral things from imprint fossils. And this picture was actually taken from Dinosaur Ridge, um, which is right up I-70. So you should check it out if you haven't. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, so... Um, another thing to remember about the fossil record, it is awesome, but it is incomplete. A couple of reasons why. Some species never left fossils because maybe they were hard to fossilize. If you think about like sharks and stingrays, they're mostly made of cartilage, so there's nothing that will fossilize well. Um, a lot of fossils have been destroyed, so... Um, People sometimes just don't know and they'll start digging and they'll completely destroy stuff or people are developers and they don't want to spend the money on getting it perfectly, you know, um, well taken care of and so they just kind of cover it up. Um, and then there, it's thought that we've only found a third of the fossils that are out there. That's an estimate. Who knows how you estimate what's out there versus what you found, but that's the numbers that I've been seeing. So kind of interesting to think about that as well. Um, and going along with that, we're really not going to get too into this, but I just thought I'd put it on here, are going to be your eras and periods geologically, and they're marked by mass extinctions, so you can actually take a look at those um, on your own. So in the next one, we're going to talk about um, how the continents drifted and how that affected speciation and phylogeny.